everyone, this is Julie Maxson, the main stamper. I am here for my Thursday at three, and I am so excited to bring you probably the easiest fun fold card imaginable. Now, as I say that it's super easy, also you need the card measurements because um, there is some math involved. There's always a little bit of math involved for fun folds. And this one, um, while it's super easy, you still need to know the math, right? So this is called the offset gatefold card. Now, if you know what a gatefold card is, it's one that um, you fold in half in the front, it meets in the middle, it has two doors that kind of open. And they are typically a centered door, kind of uh, the regular gatefold is centered. This one is called offset. So it actually has, I probably should show you the card here too, actually has a little bit of an offset opening. So you can see here that this fold and this fold are two different sizes. They don't meet in the middle. They're off centered. And look at it, the inside. I made this into an Easter card. This one is really pretty. I am using some celebration products. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the end of celebration. Today is the last day of celebration. So if you have waited and procrastinated, hi Jess, today's your last day to get celebration items. Now if you have some of these celebration items, hi Lois, you're going to be able to make these cards and they're going to be beautiful cards. I think they're perfect for Easter. We're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get over to my workspace. Please continue to say hi as you jump on. I love to know who's hanging out with me in the craft room. And like I said, this is going to be a quick, fun fold tutorial. I always love how quick they are. I may need to make a little bit of a camera adjustment here. I see that. I uh, didn't take into consideration here. I'm going to just move this down slightly. I don't think that made too much of a... Okay, we're good. I had a little bit of the glare from my... Um, light at the top of that. I just want to make sure that that was okay. All right, very good. Now, if you are on my email newsletter list, you have this card recipe in your ma in your mailbox today. I, I sent this out, and I always give you some great pictures here, kind of to help you figure out how this card goes together. Because you've got the recipe, you've got the supplies that I use, which of course you can change up, and then the directions. So, if you are not on my newsletter list yet. It's a really great time to get on. Every Thursday I come on uh, with a fun fold on my Thursday at three, and we uh, continue our theme of the week. So our theme of the week has been everyday details, and you're gonna see, you're gonna notice from my card, I've used this little nest. I loved this card class this week. In fact, let's take a look at another nest card. So this is the first card that I did on Monday, in case you missed them. Hi, Patty. Oh my gosh, Lois loves the, I love the flight and airy too. It's so awesome. Hi, Valerie from Albany. So happy to have you on here today. All right, so let's just kind of compare. I like to compare. Let's compare our, our nest eggs today. So you can see here on my original card on Monday, I have very blue eggs, right? They look kind of more like robin eggs, but I want to do something a little bit more springy today. So there's kind of a look at different ways to play. You're going to notice this has more gray in it and this has more brown in it. So I was basically playing with my card base colors as well. So your nest doesn't always have to be the same old, same old colors. So this was um, the second card from our class this week. This one is the teacup that I did in um, petal pink with that fun doily. I did a color swap on Positive Paper Crafters. I asked you who wore it better. Resoundingly, you guys love the blue. There was a few people that liked the petal pink, but the blue really was the clear winner of that round. And then today over there, I'm asking which ribbon do you like better? This was a third card. We have the, the green, lemon lime, and we have the pink, the petal pink. So there, and a lot of people prefer the green ribbon. I always love to like play a little bit and then have you guys talk to me about what you love and don't love. So we've been playing with everyday details this week. We're going to use these dies in our card today. Now, what's awesome about this actual setup is you could probably use um, squares. You could use any shape dies right here. You don't have to use just these ones. So keep that in mind as you, if you want to put this together. Now, I, besides using this really sweet flight and airy designer series paper, which is from Celebration. So I picked out the pinky colors, right? With the birds. So sweet. Really love all of these patterns on here. That's a Celebration freebie that ends today. This uh, stamp set is also a Celebration freebie that ends today. And I've got the Thinking of You this Easter because I wanted to bring in the bird paper the bird nest, totally different items, right? This this bird nest comes from a stamp set that's in the spring catalog. I bet it's gonna carry over into the annual. And then I turned it into an Easter card. So, so simple, right? Now, if you're interested in celebration, make sure you get your orders in before the end of today. I've got everything here to make this card. And I kind of, I, I like to add more, right? So I actually have, if you peeked at it, I have t um, layers on the outside 
and on the inside. I carried that continuity in. I just thought it was super pretty. Now you don't have to put layers on the inside if you don't want to, but I really like the layers and I just can't help myself sometimes. Let's talk about how we're gonna score our card base. This is your basic card base, five and a half by eight and a half, half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. We are going to score it. And per my directions, which I set aside because I didn't think I needed them, we need to score at one and a half and five and three quarters. So we're going to start at one and a half. I've got ink over here on the side. So one and a half is our first score line. Lining that up at the top here, I'm going to use my scoring blade, one and a half. And then five and three quarters, which you can scooch over. You don't even have to open up the extra arm, which is really nice. Five and three quarters. So it's kind of nice to have a fun fold that you don't have to open the arm of your paper trimmer for. I think it's a nice thing. All right, so there are two score lines right here. So I've got one here, and I'm not folding it over super harshly right now because I'm going to kind of show you how I get to this point. So I've got just, I've kind of bowed them a little bit, right? I'm going to make sure that they meet in the middle without um, bumping and crossing over. So right now I've kind of got them where they're meeting in the middle, and I still have bows on either end of this designer or cardstock base and I'm going to kind of push out this way on both of them while I'm holding this kind of the seam is in the middle and that way I don't get that overlap so if you can kind of manipulate your cardstock even though it's scored you still want to be able to manipulate it so it doesn't um, this side doesn't come over top of this side or there's a gap in the middle, the gap of all things, right? We don't want any gap in the middle. I'm just kind of trying to make sure this is burnished well. So, and trying to not make too much noise on the glass mat. The glass mat is a little, oh gosh, I am so sorry. Oh, so sorry. The glass mat is, is loud. And um, that is one thing that it's really hard to do videos with everything clanging on it. All right, so here is the bones of our card, right? We've got everything that we need here. I'm going to bring in my designer series paper, and we are going to decorate really simply with this. So you could, of course, make more um, matted layers if you wanted to. You could kind of um, take advantage of the fact that you could add another piece of cardstock behind each of these little designer series paper um, pieces. And I also want to talk about really quickly because this kind of, well I, I did glue this on already but you can do it you can have the orientation go this way where it's wider on this side and then shorter on this side I'm kind of got this going in, in this direction so we're going to continue to keep this this will kind of be a perfect match of my first one but I really like how it turned out and um, these these just might be my Easter cards this year because they are so simple and so pretty. So um, if you don't mind, you know, cutting a little bit of paper and gluing it on or using your tape, if that's what you prefer, just keep your orientation going in the right direction and you're good to go. And like I said, any kind of element can go on the front of your card and then you can jazz it up. You just have to be careful when you apply it that you don't add it on in a way that makes your card close completely, right? So there is the beginnings of our card. And I have a regular four by five and a quarter insert for the inside, so this is perfect. And I'm gonna use Balmy Blue ink and the sentiment from the Celebration stamp set, the thinking of you this Easter. So we're just gonna put this on here and we're gonna put this right in the middle. And this card, I mean, really goes together so quickly. This is a super easy one to do. So this one's gonna come right here. Now, of course, this could be a Mother's Day card. This could be a birthday card, thinking of you card. I mean, anything really. Um, but just, it's these colors are so pretty together. And I am using a gray granite base in case you're wondering what I am working with here. This is a gray granite card base, which may not be the first color you think of when you think of an Easter card, but it works really well as a neutral color against all these pinks and blues, which are super pretty, of course, as well. All right, I'm just popping back over to see. Hi, Janice. Oh yeah, the bird paper is perfect for this nest. I know, isn't that awesome? Because it really is. When I saw this bird paper and I was playing with the nest, I was like, they, they go together. It's, it's like it's meant to be. All right, so next I'm gonna show you how I did the dies for this particular card. So you can see here that I've got this big round die. If I can find where I put my dies. I kind of, 
I quickly move around and, and throw things everywhere. So the largest circle right here is what I use to die cut this shape right here. So that's number one. Now you're gonna need another, I put a gray, you can kind of see the gray surround here. So I'm going to die cut the gray one, but I'm gonna bring in two different dies. So this die actually has two rows of circles or dots on it. And we're gonna actually nest these together evenly, just like this, and we're going to die cut. I'm gonna move this for a second, because of course I need to bring in my my, my big boss has got to come in here and do a little die cutting for us here. So let me just bring this in here so that I can show you how I got the two pieces for my card. So I'm just using that big die just like I did for the white piece and then I'm mounting in and layering in that second die and we're going to go ahead and run this through. So if you want an outline die, this is how you're going to do it just like this and we'll get all these things off of here and then I'll show you what we have left over besides lots of little Swiss dots here. So this is the piece that we need for the outside. This is the inside piece. So you can use this, save this for another project. You won't need this for this one. And this is going to come on here just like this. And it's going to give us that cool little outline. Now you're going to notice there's a whole bunch of little, a little circle dots here. I'm just gonna kind of come off screen real quickly. I'm using the um, the brush end of my take your pick tool. I'm just gonna kind of scooch some of these off of here if I can without making, I mean, it really makes a mess. It looks like it's snowing, um, which in fact, we woke up in today, yesterday, 50 degrees outside. And today we woke up and it was like 20 degrees outside. It snowed and iced and what a mess today to wake up to. But it is Maine and it is winter, right? It's still February. Happy leap year day. All right, so let me just try to get rid of some of these. I didn't get all of them off, but you get the idea. Now I did take my nest stamp and some memento ink and I did stamp this earlier so that I could just have one going for you because all I've done so far is I've come in with the gray granite kind of mimicking my card base and I used the light gray granite first and I just did the entire nest really quickly this morning because I wanted to be able to kind of just come back through here and fill in a little bit and show you how I colored the eggs. So I am going to just bring the darker of the gray granite blends in and I'm going to just bring this in. I'm going to kind of color the sticks that come off the nest. This is very similar to how I did my card during class on Monday when I did the blue egg card, right? So, but this time I'm using the gray granite blends instead of crumb cake and pecan pie. Um, but I am going to bring in a little bit of the crumb cake because I do also want to bring in a little bit of brown to this nest too. So my nest isn't just gray, it's also kind of brown and gray. You can just add some color in wherever you feel like you need to add a little bit of brown in. It just adds a little bit of interest. I like to do d really dark here around the eggs themselves here on the back side of the nest because it holds really well. So there's a little bit of brown and that was the dark crumb cake. Now I know you're dying to know how are these eggs colored because if you have the set and you're, you're like I want to make pink eggs too I use the bubble bath. So I'm going to start with the light. I'm going to color all three of these eggs completely in bubble the, the light bubble bath um, blend. So each one of these is getting a nice coat of the light pink so cute but we have to really jazz them up a little bit so now I'm going to come in with the dark bubble bath and I'm going to come down here on the bottom of the eggs I'll lift this up in just a second so you can see but there are there are some lines in the stamp set and so these little black lines right here on these three I'm kind of um, just putting a little bit of extra bubble bath there with the dark and then I kind of go around the edges of the eggs a little bit and probably put a little bit here. I'm actually coloring in the air, which is <laughs> not the easiest thing to do. So I'm kind of just coloring just like that, right? So now we have some pink eggs. But if I show you the difference between these two, you're gonna say the eggs on the card still look a little bit more natural. And that's because I came back in with some crumb cake and I've used the light this time. So I felt like giving them just a hint of brown along those same edges where I just used the darkest bubble bath just a little bit of brown in here. It's going to really kind of make them look a little bit more natural, right? Because I don't know any birds that lay pink eggs, but you know, they can have a hue of pink to them perhaps. So I've come in with the brown, this is the light crumb. And I'm gonna come in um, one more time with the light bubble bath. And I'm just gonna kind of color 
right across the brown one more time. So really blending the colors, which is what the blends are meant to do, is to kind of color, blend, move those colors together. And what I'm trying to do is completely not touch the centers of the eggs. So I left the centers of the eggs just the plain bubble bath that I started with, but because that's the lightest color that I've used, they look almost white in the middle, so they're a little bit, um, a little bit more um, shaded that way too. So now we're just going to come in with um, what do I have here? Soft sea foam. We're just adding really soft colors. This is a springtime card, so I'm just coming in and I'm adding a little bit of green in here to the leaves. Now the soft sea foam is a really soft color. I'm also going to kind of come across these other greens that stick out. And I'm just going to scribble a little bit of green on here too. Now notice I'm not like being super delicate. This is a really light color. You can barely see it, but that is exactly how I've colored my nest in my and my eggs. What's missing here though, you may, again, you may notice like, wow, the other card look, the card looks different. We're going to actually bring in our balmy blue ink again and a blending brush. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to bring in well, we're going to do it right here. We're going to just kind of come through here. We're going to start dark on the sides and just add a little hint of ink into the middle. So I'm not even trying to bring the blue completely on board, but as you bring a little bit of the blue on the edges and it kind of sneaks in a little bit, so you can kind of see there's still some white around the middle, which is where I want it to be. Um, it really just helps to bring it all to life so that that nest doesn't look like it's just on a piece of white paper, right? It's a little bit more jazzed up. So that's a, another great thing about this glass mat is you can do all kinds of good things on it. I'm gonna just come in here and remove my balmy blue ink, get that off of there. So now we're basically gonna take our little piece here that we did die cut, that extra little circle, and I'm just gonna very carefully add a little bit of adhesive here kind of around the middle of these lines. And I'm not using a lot because you don't really need to use a lot. So very sparingly. And then I'm just gonna line this back up right on top of here. So it's covering up that blue. Now, if you don't like to cover it all up because you think, well, oh, that blue outline was just absolutely stunning, which of course it was, I really like that blue outline. But we're gonna just go ahead and glue this on here so that it has that little bit of continuity of the gray to all of the gray that we've used on our card base. Now to put this on our card, you have a couple of options, of course. I don't know if mine's quite glued down completely or dried, but you can you can attach it to this, the smaller side. You can attach it to the larger side, and maybe depending on what shape you're using, you could, um, you know, move it over one way more or the other. I am gonna take advantage of this side over here only because there's more room to work with this shape. So if I put it on this side over here, I wouldn't have a lot of, of um, ability to attach. It's not gonna attach very far over here. So I'm just gonna kind of look to see where that's gonna go. I'm gonna bring in some dimensionals. I'm gonna put this down one more time, kind of dry fitting it in my mind's eye and then picking it up a little bit and knowing that I want some dimensionals just right, right around here. I think I'll use about three of them and that's gonna be absolutely perfect. So I'll take my dimensionals off. I know they're really hard to see once the birdies are, this is beautiful paper, once those birdies are there. Now keep in mind also, as you look at the finished card, that when you open it, you are gonna see a little bit of your element here hanging off the side because it comes across this way. So, you know, just keep that thought in mind as well. Depending on how it looks, you may wanna cover the back of it up. Maybe you don't wanna put it over too, too far. And I think right about there is gonna be good. So I've attached it this way so that I'm not putting adhesive on this part and accidentally, because it does happen, accidentally gluing my card closed. That would be a really tricky card for someone to receive. So there is no, there's no little clasp over here. There's no, nothing that's holding this together. It basically, once it's, it arrives, it's kind of flat, but it will open nicely, right? So there's nothing that's kind of catching it. Now I did bring in some of this, um, it's just like a very light balmy blue and white variegated ribbon. This is in the annual catalog. And I'm just gonna make um, a little bow here. This is a really soft ribbon. Now originally I thought I wanted something pink, 
because I was like, oh, this card is so pinky cute. It needs lots of pink on it. And I put something pink on there, but I wasn't really happy with the way that it looked. And then my next thought was, well, you know, there's a lot of blue on this card too. So let's, let's continue to use the blues here. I'm going to trim this a little bit. So this blue worked out just really nicely. It's a nice soft ribbon as mentioned so it's kind of easy to use it won't be as bumpy if you're mailing this card um, because we're always aware of things that make our cards heavier or more difficult to mail this is kind of a nice soft ribbon so I'm using tear and tape to attach to the back and then I'm going to put this right here on the front I'm just going to close my card back down again kind of underneath the nest kind of just right underneath there to take up some of that space in between the nest, the bottom of the nest and, and my little circle. And just like that, we have a really sweet Easter card, which of course could be any other kind of card too, but this paper with the little birdies and the nest, I mean, they just play together so, so well. So that is our fun fold card for today. So I'm going to pop back over and look at the messages hi from the Cape. I love that you're hanging out with me. That is so awesome. And Lois says that there are certain warblers that lay pink eggs. This is perfect. That is so awesome. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this card. It really is a pretty card and it's definitely going to be very cheerful in someone's mailbox, especially um, Easter's early this year. It is the end of March, so it may still be mud season. It may still be kind of drab and dreary, um, but we're going to be welcoming in those spring colors, and this card has everything that you would need for a nice springtime card. Thanks so much for your compliments. Hi, Tabs. Good to see you on here. Thanks for the love for this fun fold. Check your um, inbox if you haven't seen it yet. It is really an easy fold, but you do need those uh, measurements to, on the scoring for it. So it's not your basic gatefold. It's an offset gatefold, which makes it a little bit more, you know, fabulous and fun. All right. So that's what I've got for today. Make sure you're getting those last minute celebration orders in. Um, you'll get my card class if you're ordering with me with my house code. Um, some of you have already ordered and I appreciate that so much. I can't wait to send you out these beautiful card kits. Thanks again for spending time with me. I appreciate it. Uh, leave any questions you have in the comments and I will get back to you. Until next time, stay inspired, create something beautiful and share the love. Bye everybody.